is it uh, recruitment, synchronization, ray coding, intra, intermuscular coordination, etc. All of those things contribute to force output. Uh, I was I was listening to your explanation of uh, con concentric and eccentric versus yielding and overcoming. Yes, and I was I was thinking about the the contrast sets that you would usually do when you would do like high load, I don't know, like a squat, high loaded squat, and then uh -huh. into like a plyometric activity or <laughs> just like jumping. So yeah. it's just basically uh, like biasing the muscle tissue to a concentric bias and then just trying to hold the concentric bias while the connective tissues will yield to explode. All right, all right. So that that was basically my my only question. Yeah. So so you, so so think about this. It's sort of there's a couple of there's there's a couple of influences here. So you're you're number one. So think about all all the concepts that are taught in strength training as to how to increase the force output. So you got recruitment, rate coding, synchronization. You know, do you understand what I'm talking about? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if anybody's ever read science and practice of strength, is it science and practice of strength training? Is it um, Satyorsky's book? Science and practice. Is it, is it science and practice of strength training? Somebody help me out here. Is, it, is that what it, okay. It's been a while since I've picked it up, but anyway, it's probably one of the better books that, that explains a lot of this, this stuff. Um, but so, so, okay, so we got, like I said, uh, recruitment, synchronization, ray coding, intra, intermuscular coordination, et cetera. All of those things contribute to force output, right? So I do something that is a high force activity that promotes all of those elements. So I get more muscle fibers, more motor units to recruit at one time, right? I bias it towards a concentric orientation. There, that that it assures me the force production, but then I still have to train the connective tissue element, which is a rate dependent behavior. So you basically wanna, after you have that force production, you wanna make your, your elastic band thicker well, I'm what I'm what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is is get that that connective tissue to behave appropriately for the con the context, right? So if I was a power lifter that doesn't have a time constraint on it, I want very very stiff connective tissues that don't deform easily. All right. right? If I'm trying to be fast, I need I need the the storage and release of that energy to be very very quick. So you want to yield just enough and not too much. So to too much yield, too much yield increases the amount of time between the expansion of the tissue and the compression of the tissue. So now I'm slow, right? Which is what I might not want, right? I get too much dampening, right? Okay, yeah. right? And so then I'm trying to optimize optimize a behavior within a time constraint. So, so you have to understand how much time you have available. So we go to Lalo's question, okay? High level sprinter, ground contact, right? 0.11 seconds. Yeah. That's not a lot of time for storage and release, but it does happen, right? So yeah. if, I, yeah. if I have, if I, so think about it, if I took a sprinter, and I teach them to yield too much. It would just get slower. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But see, this also determines like what type of, of activities you're going to choose because the time constraint will matter. The behavior, like how stiff do I need to tune, tune the connective tissues? So again, I'll give uh, Austin Ulrich the, the credit for, for coming up with that term and concept. Um, where I need that connective tissue to be just like appropriately stiff and appropriately elastic to get the, the right behavior based on the amount of time that I have available. 
if I was training a high jumper, okay, the ground contact is a little bit longer than a sprinter. So I might choose a little bit different activities. If I was training a basketball player compared to the sprinter, I would have more time on the ground to produce force, wouldn't I? You see, yeah, yeah. So, so then it starts, it starts to help you select which activities are going to be more appropriate, right? Whereas a sprinter, I have to bump, 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 bump across the ground. Basketball player is like, bump, 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 you see? So, so again, it's like, but, but you, it, you can combine these activities, you know, like you'll see all sorts of different contrasts applied within the workout. But you can you can separate them out into phases depending on again depending on the individual depending on their responses. Right? All right. So there's a lot of ways to organize it, but but understanding the principle is what what's most important. All right. All right. Makes sense. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you.